Amos. 15. The Law of Worship. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord God. Amos 4, 5. By saying that the Israelites loved to do these things, he upbraids their presumption in devising at their own will new modes of worship, as though he said, I require no sacrifices from you except those offered at Jerusalem, but ye offer them to me in a profane place. Therefore regard your sacrifices as offered to yourselves and not to me. We indeed know how hypocrites ever make God a debtor to themselves. When they undertake any labor in their frivolous ceremonies, they think that God is bound to them. Ye ought to have consulted me, and simply to have obeyed my word, to have regarded what pleased me, what I commanded. But ye have despised my word, neglected my law, and followed what pleased yourselves, and proceeded from your own fancies. Since then your own will is your law, seek a recompense from yourselves, for I allow none of these things. What I require is implicit submission, I look for nothing else but obedience to my law. As ye render not this, but according to your own will, it is no worship of my name." prayer grant almighty god that as thou wouldst have our life to be formed by the rule of thy law and hast there revealed to us what pleaseth thee that we may not wander in uncertainty but render thee obedience o grant that we may wholly submit ourselves to thee and not only devote our whole life and all our labours to thee but also offer to thee as a sacrifice our understanding and whatever prudence and reason we possess so that by spiritually serving thee we may really glorify thy name through christ our lord amen sixteen a solemn exhortation Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Amos 4.12 This passage may be explained in two ways, either as an ironical sentence or as a simple and serious exhortation to repentance. If we take it ironically, the sense will be, Come now, meet me with all your obstinacy and with whatever may serve you. Will you be able to escape my vengeance by setting up yourselves against me, as you have hitherto done? And certainly the prophet, in denouncing final ruin on the people, seems here as though he wished designedly to touch them to the quick when he says, Meet now thy God and prepare thyself, that is, gather all thy strength and thy forces and thine auxiliaries, try what all this will avail thee. But as in the next chapter the prophet exhorts again the Israelites to repentance and sets before them the hope of favour, this place may be taken in another sense, as though he said, Since thou seest thyself guilty, and also as thou seest that thou art seeking subterfuges in vain, being not able by any means to elude the hand of thy judge, then see at last that thou mayest anticipate the final ruin which is impending. The prophets, after having threatened destruction to the chosen people, ever moderate the asperity of their doctrine, as there were at all times some remnant seed, though hidden. Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that since by thy word thou kindly invitest us to thyself, we may not turn deaf ears to thee, but anticipate thy rod and scourges, and that when, for the stupidity and thoughtlessness by which we have become inebriated, thou addest those punishments by which thou sharply urgest us to repent, O grant that we may not continue wholly intractable, but at length turn our hearts to thy service and submit ourselves to the yoke of thy word, and that we may be so instructed by the punishments which thou hast inflicted on us, and still inflictest, that we may truly and from the heart turn to thee, and offer ourselves to thee as a sacrifice, that thou mayest govern us according to thy will, and so rule all our affections by thy spirit, that we may, through the whole of our life, strive to glorify thy name, in Christ Jesus thy Son, our Lord. Amen. 17. Herdman and Prophet then answered Amos, and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdsman, and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. Amos 7.14 Had Amos simply denied that he was a prophet, he might on this account have been thrust away from his office of teaching, for he lacked a call. But he means that he was not a prophet who had been from his childhood instructed in God's law to be an interpreter of Scripture and for the same reason he says that he was not the son of a prophet, for there were then, we know, colleges for prophets instituted for this end, that there might be always some nursery for the church of God, so that it might not be destitute of good and faithful teachers. 
Amos says that he was not of that class. He therefore honestly confesses that he was an illiterate man, but by this he gained to himself more authority inasmuch as the Lord had seized on him as it were by force, and set him over the people to teach them. It was a greater miracle that Christ chose rude and ignorant men as his apostles, than if he had at first chosen Paul or men like him who were skilled in the law. If Christ had at the beginning selected such disciples, their authority would have appeared less, but as he had prepared by his Spirit those who were before unlearned, it appeared more evident that they were sent from above. Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that inasmuch as thou dost give such loose reins to Satan, that he attempts in all manner of ways to subvert thy servants, O grant that they who have been sent and moved by thee, and at the same time furnished with the invincible strength of thy spirit, may go on perseveringly to the last in the discharge of their office, and whether their adversaries assail them by plots or oppose them by open violence, may they not desist from their course, but devote themselves wholly to thee with prudence, as well with courage, that they may thus persevere in continual obedience, and do thou also dissipate all the mists and all the wiles that Satan spreads to deceive the inexperienced, until the truth emerge, which is the conqueror of the devil and of the whole world, and until thy son, the son of righteousness, appear, that he may gather the whole world, that in this his peaceful kingdom we may enjoy the victory, which is daily to be obtained by us in our constant struggles with the enemies of thine only Son. Amen. 18. The Power of God It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven, and hath founded his troop in the earth, he that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Amos 9.6 the prophet, in general terms, describes the power of God, that he might the more impress his hearers, and that they might not heedlessly reject what he had previously threatened respecting their approaching ruin, for he had said, Lo, God will smite the land, and it shall tremble. This was special. Now, as men received with deaf ears those threatenings, the prophet added, by way of confirmation, a striking description of the power of God, as though he said, Ye do hear what God denounces, now, as he has clothed me with his own authority, and commanded me to terrify you by setting before you your punishment. Know ye that ye have to do with God himself, whose majesty ought to make you all and all that you are to tremble. Ye exist only through his power, and whenever he pleases he can withdraw his spirit, and then this whole world must vanish, of which ye are but the smallest particles." Since then he alone is God, and there is in you but a momentary strength, and since this great power of God, the evidences of which he affords you through the whole order of nature, is so conspicuous to you, how is it that ye are so heedless? Prayer Grant, Almighty God, that, as thou hast showed to us by evidence so remarkable, that all things are under thy command, and that we who live in this world, through thy favour, are as nothing, for thou couldst reduce us to nothing in a moment. O grant that, being conscious of thy power, we may reverently fear thy hand, and be wholly devoted to thy glory. And as thou kindly offerest thyself to us as a father, may we be drawn by this kindness, and surrender ourselves wholly to thee by a willing obedience, and never labour for anything throughout life, but to glorify thy name, as thou hast redeemed us through thine only begotten Son, that so we may also enjoy through him that eternal inheritance which is laid up for us in heaven. Amen.